This video is sponsored by Cheetah Box. This is Ground Affected. My name is Brent, and welcome to your computer crashing during supporting of your 3D models. But don't worry, because Cheetah Box has a auto recovery system. In this video, I'm going to be painting Master Chief from the Halo series. This was sculpted by Sanex. I will leave a link for Sanex in the description below. While you're down there, make sure to click like and consider subscribing because for every new subscriber that I get, I will have one more new subscriber. Also, when you're in that general direction, you might as well leave some words in the tiny little box that YouTube allows you to leave some words in. And of course, without any more further babble bubbles, let's just get on with the video. So Cheetah Box asked me if I would like to try out the new Pro update. And of course I said yes, I would like to try it out. The first thing I needed to do was update and download the new firmware for my own printer. And I decided that I was gonna use my Sonic Mini 4K to do this video with. The first thing you need to do if you're gonna update or upgrade the firmware on your printer is to download the firmware you need, copy all the files that you need for that firmware onto an empty disk and take that to your printer. Then follow the instructions that the makers of the printer give you for updating the firmware on your printer. You just let it run and do its thing in my case and it did everything it needed to do and it was updated. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to find my printer in Cheetah Box after I've downloaded the new pro version. I'm then going to have a look at everything and make sure that everything specs wise is good for my first exposure test and I'm gonna print in a Merilabs exposure test town. I'm gonna run through all the settings and make sure that everything is perfect, at least for the first test, and from there on I can make changes and adjustments. Cheetah Box also sent me a thousand gram bottle of resin for me to print stuff with so that I can make this video for you guys. Recently, Sanex had created the Master Chief sculpture for one of his monthly releases and I decided this would be a great way for me to show off the new Cheetah Box and how it deals with prints specifically on my Sonic Mini 4K. Once the prints had come out, all I needed to do was start by filling some of the gaps on the base and then give everything a surface primer. The surface primer I choose to use is Vallejo surface primer and this is a black. This is going to help keep some of the darker recesses dark for me without having to get in there and squeeze a paintbrush into some model's armpit which is quite difficult sometimes. I give these a good solid layer and I give it a good half an hour to at least an hour before I start painting over the top of that. One thing that's really cool about Vallejo surface primer is that it has some kind of a self flattening mechanism in it. I can't explain that because I'm not a scientist but it does flatten on the surface which is great. I then started off with a slightly darkish green and I'm not going to paint this on directly. I'm actually going to stipple this on. By stippling, I'm creating a couple of things here. What is happening is I'm creating a texture on the surface of the model. Number one. Number two, I'm also creating a little bit of visual texture to the base coat that's going onto the model. So this is going to give him a slightly more dirtier look than what would be usual if you had to just paint this in a solid color. I kind of jab at the model mostly from the top down because I want to try to keep some of the black into the lower parts or essentially the parts that are in shadow anyway. Once I've done the entire model, I'll come back with a much lighter green and this I'm going to do the exact same process but this time I'm going to focus a lot more on the top parts of the model and I'm going to try not to get any of it down on the lower parts where I've saved some of that shadow from the black base. And as you can see, this creates a really great texture. Now in order to settle that texture down so it's not too stark of a contrast, I'm going to spray a green wash or shade directly over the top of everything. In essence, this is going to act like a kind of glaze. There is still going to be texture on the model, but this will soften it ever so slightly. Next, I'm going to go in and paint all the parts around the midriff, the legs, the bits of the armor that are actually black in color. I'm actually going to paint these with a dark silver, which is a metallic paint, but I'm going to dull the metallic finish of these later with some washes and some matte varnishes. At this point, I'm just trying to get a good solid base coat over all the parts that need to go dark and make sure that it is as neat and tidy as it can possibly be. I'd like to take this moment to thank the sponsors of this video, Cheetah Box Pro. 
Tutorbox Pro is a revolutionary 3D data preparation software, which is really fancy words for a slicer for 3D printing in resin. Some of the features of the Pro version are quickly detect and add supports for island overhangs, add up to nine types of support structures such as branch, tree-like and contour supports. Identify planes of symmetry smartly for you to add symmetrical supports. You can now also use different resin profiles within the same print on the same bed at the same time. There is also a powerful and easy to use model repair tool that you can use to detect and fix model errors like holes, inverted faces and redundant shells and all it takes is just a few clicks. It has an enhanced island detection which will detect the islands for you and help you find all islands that you need to support for your next 3D print. It also has auto layout, a bool operation, you're able to split models as well as measure sizes and distances within the same app. If you would like to try out Cheetah Box, make sure to check the description for a link to the Cheetah Box website. Thank you Cheetah Box for supporting content creators and sponsoring my video. And now for the base. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use a technical paint. This is something that means different things from different companies but in this case all it means is there is sand inside of this paint and that sand is what's going to create a texture on the base. It just gives it a more sandy look. I'm then going to use a wash over the whole entire top of this base. Normally I would produce something with a lot more colors in it but because it's Master Chief I'm just going to try and create a dusty dirty rock that would just be found on some kind of faraway planet. Whilst all that dries, I'm going to come back to Master Chief again and I'm going to add a panel line wash from Tamir. This is not a normal wash, this is something that is mixed, I'm pretty sure it's an enamel based paint. Usually you can make this out of oils and a thinner and it will give you the same kind of effect, you do not have to buy this specific one. But the way to use this is to put it on, it will pull up and run through all the recesses and then you wipe off all the excess and whilst it's dried, you can come back later and use a bit of thinners to wipe off even more if you need to. I make sure to get this into almost everywhere, putting this over the entire model will tie a lot of this together. And because I needed a while for that to dry, I'm going to go back to working on the base again. I use skin tones which seems weird but it is the colours for a rocky Martian space rock thing. I give this a highlight, I'm using a dry brush which is a large makeup brush, it's not a specific dry brush. Your best dry brush is going to be something you take out of your wife's makeup bag. And then I'm going to take a little bit of a darker brown wash and I'm going to put that into my airbrush and I'm just going to spray that into a couple of areas. I'm not going to spray the whole thing, I'm just aiming to try and get some shadows just into some deeper parts of the rock. This helps to create a bit of contrast. Now for something super exciting, I'm going to use pigment powders. I've used these before in a couple of videos, but for this specifically being a Martian or alien rock, a pigment powder is the best thing. I then spray plain water over the top of that to make sure that it settles and sticks to the piece. I used Rust-Oleum Chrome Metallic Paint to paint the logo and I sprayed that solid silver or chrome, solid chrome, let's call it chrome. And then I glued that onto the base, making sure it was as straight as it could be. Whilst the glue and the base was drying, I came back and I painted the numbers that are on Master Chief's chest. And because everything was looking quite shiny from the panel liner, I had to add a good solid matte varnish over the top of everything. I then went back with another layer of dry brushing over the top of this. This was just to catch some of the raised areas and get a little bit more contrast between the edges and the main armor of the suit. And the logo needed a little bit more color to it so I added a little bit of metallic blue into my airbrush and carefully sprayed that just on the bottom portions of the logo. I then needed to add some weathering to the armor and I used a light silver and I went across all the edges, most of the edges, and I just kind of added some dabs of paint to the edges. This is just to create a scuffed look, almost as if the paint on the armor in the real model, which would be a real Master Chief, not a model, but you know what I mean, it just to give it a look that that paint had chipped. I dry brushed that same silver onto the gun and that's where I called the body done. Now to work on the visor of Master Chief. This is arguably his most prominent feature. 
So for this, I needed to make sure I spent most of my time making sure this was right. I started out by creating a horizon. Essentially, it's a very reflective, orangey, goldish looking visor. So I created a horizon of perhaps the area or the environment that he is essentially standing in. And then I started to proceed to work my way up with the orange and a little bit of yellow to create the effect that the visor is round and super reflective. I worked my way up in glazes and I used the airbrush between layers to dry things. Essentially no paint is coming out the airbrush, I'm just spraying air to make sure things dry a little bit faster. Where I needed a boost of color, I placed down a layer of white and then allowed that to dry and then I came back with the color that I wanted over the top of that. For the edges, I used a wash to darken around the edges just to create a bit more depth in the entire visor. I used a lot of white and then color over white and then white and then color over white to create more saturation in the color. The reason this happens is because the paints are translucent so putting white underneath gives them a brighter base to start from. Hopefully you managed to find something in this video that helps you with your own 3D printing and painting endeavors in the future. And now that we're nearing the end of the video, I'd like to thank my patrons who support all the videos that I create. And this week we had two more patrons which I would like to shout out right now. Matt Maguire and Katuliba. <laughs> thank you my dudes for helping keep these lights blinding the corners of my eyeballs. If you want to make sure that you don't miss out on future content just like this, make sure to click the subscribe button. Perhaps ring the little bell, and while you're around that area, click the like, share it with your gran, and of course, if you didn't like anything you saw in this video, there's only really one thing I can say to you, and that is, just click dislike dude, and f*** off. Hopefully the sponsors understand that that is just the outro, I have no control over how the outro goes.